rest of your life with. A lot of our brothers and sisters have the idea of marriage confused. They think marriage is just something that you throw at a person that you're sleeping with to appease them so they can be quiet so that they can continue on doing that dirt. Right. Marriage is a mystery. All right? Give me Sirach 37 and 8. Because the last teacher that came up here told you that you should prove. You should prove a person. Meaning, you should weigh their actions against the word of God. You would never be able to weigh the actions of someone against the word of God if you've never been actually taught the word of God. Contrary to popular belief, a lot of you have not been taught the word of God in its truest form. You've been taught some watered down version of what was taught to them. Remind you again, 4th of July, you've been taught by the same man who has a lot of blood on his hand, who has no intention of teaching you the truth. But we are here to teach you the truth, sister. All right, listen up. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 37, verse 8. Beware of a counselor. We talk in the scriptures about counseling all the time. This means you don't just go off of your emotions. You don't just go off of thoughts that you have in your mind. You take that thought or that emotion that you're having and then you go talk to your brother or sister and say, I'm going through this, that, and the third. I'm thinking this, that, and the third. What do you think about this, that, and the third? Is that practice today? Do a lot of our people, when they're emotionally distressed, think about us as a whole. When they're emotionally distressed, do they really go out and counsel or do they just go do things to make themselves feel better in that moment? They go do what they normally do, God make them feel better. Right, right. They go out and do things to make them feel better. But the Bible says what? Beware of a counselor. Be cautious of who you're counseling with. This goes along with proving. All right, so beware, meaning you have to have prior knowledge or know who it is you're counseling with. You brothers understand me? My brother on the bike, we teaching our brothers how to resolve conflict. We teaching our brothers how to actually entreat one another. Y'all got five minutes and this information gonna change your life. Read. And know before what, he, what need he has. Call it and read it again from the top. This is the book of Sarah or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse eight. Beware of a counselor and know before what need he has. A man, for a lot of our sisters, they might not know it, but they need something from you. Say for instance, a man is locked up and he's on his way home. And there's a sister vulnerable enough to pay him some attention because she's, I don't know, maybe she's hard up for something. They may call it a fair exchange. But is that a proper way to base a relationship? A relationship shouldn't be based off of, I'm capable to provide something for you, and you end up not being able to provide anything for me, except hard deep. Like, I'm, that's not all that a woman needs. Exactly. And then once he gets once he gets tired of you, because his needs has been fulfilled, what is he gonna do? He's gonna move along. So a lot of our sisters have to know who it is that they're dealing with. Bring it up. All right, so beware of who it is you're dealing with, Ruth. Three. For he will counsel for himself. He's gonna say, hey girl, hey, I'm gonna marry you. You know what I'm saying, I'm gonna be with you. You're gonna be the only one. He's telling you this in the first few minutes of y'all meet. He's telling you this after the first month of y'all just talking. Talk is cheap, right? Three. Lest he cast the lot upon thee and say unto thee, Thy way is good. And afterwards, he stand on the other side to see what shall befall thee. So basically all that says is watch who you counsel with. Watch who you give your deepest, darkest concerns to because they're going to take according to their need. Say, for instance, they need you for some money. They need you for a place to stay. They're going to say, yeah, everything I'm telling you is great. It's good. Listen to it. Take heed to it. And then once it falls to shit, they're going to stand back and be like, hey, you should have never did it in the first place. You stupid. You stupid for trusting me. You knew I was a player in the beginning. So the Lord trying to make you aware that there's sharks out here that want to try to devour you. Look. Go back to Sirach 6. Let's go back to Sirach 6. I want to tie it all together. My brothers and sisters, walk in this way. My brother, come this way. Come this way. What's your name? I see you got Cancun on your shirt. You from Cancun or you just visited Cancun? Say it again. I can't hear you. What's your name? 
Come here, Chris. You got five minutes. You from around here? You from around here? Yeah? Where you from? Actually, where you from? Where do you see yourself on the sign? Right here. You American black? Are you West Indian? Are you a Haitian? Mexican. So that's what the, you are Mexican too? Hey, so this is what the world calls you. What does Mexican mean? Mexican means Hispanic? Who told you that? Teachers told you that. What does Mexican mean? What does God call you? What does God call a Mexican? Say it again. A son. What type of particular son? Because they've got 12 sons right here. He called you Issachar. Right. You ever heard of Aztec? Azteca? Where do you think it derives from? It derives from a uh, Hebrew word, Issachar, meaning he is higher. Your name kind of reminds you or should tell you something about yourself. You guys are hardworking people, right? The sons of God will lose their identity. Look at the front of that paper. On the front of that paper, something happened to both of us. Yeah. On the bottom, that picture, that happened to y'all before it happened to us. This land was taken over and colonized way before we got here. Y'all was here first. That's right. That's right. The Lord said that that would happen to the children of Israel if they did not hearken unto his commandments. All right, I want you to read that in Deuteronomy 28. Where you at? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments. Now listen, you walked up on your brothers. We brothers, right? You walked up on us, you hear us reading the Bible, and he reading kind of strong. You might think that's kind of weird in front of you. You've never seen somebody standing up in the park reading the Bible telling you that you're the children of Israel, and I'm a child of Israel, right? What's happening right here, if you know anything about the Bible, Moses was instrumental in leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. Egypt was a place that we served captivity. Just like modern day Egypt, look at the back of the flyer or open it up, look at the, um, the last page. You see that dollar bill? On that dollar bill, what's on the back of that dollar bill? What image is on the back? You see a pyramid. They recognize this place of America as modern day Egypt. You wanna know why? Because Egypt, according to the Bible, give me uh, Exodus 20. Listen at what Egypt is considered. Y'all can come over here if that speaker's too loud. Come over here. I want to blow your eardrums out. Come over here. That thing is kind of hurting. You're ringing all day. Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Listen what Egypt is called. Out of the house of bondage. So, did you know that your people went into captivity? You never heard that information before. You guys serve captivity. Here you serve captivity in Spain. That's why you are the property of Spain. It's not because you speak Spanish. You were property of Spain. That's what Hispanic means, of Spain. Property of Spain. Are you property? No, you're no longer property. So would you consider yourself Hispanic? You shouldn't consider yourself Hispanic. You just speak Spanish. You just happen to speak Spanish. You're not Hispanic. You are Israel, right? Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Moses took us out of the house of bondage or took us out of Egypt, right? And what we were doing in Egypt was serving captivity. Listen what he warned us about once he took us out of captivity. He wanted to prevent us from having our land stolen from us. He wanted to prevent us from having the word ice scare a lot of our brothers and sisters. You mentioned that word brothers and sisters is looking around like, oh, hell, this is gonna go down because a lot of our families get separated through that. That was a curse told to happen way before it happened. And that's gonna be instrumental in identifying you as who you truly are, read. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. 
Now, the Lord said, if you didn't hearken or listen unto the voice, we found the voice of God in the scriptures. God ain't just talking to us directly. Right. If God talked to us directly, we, would, we wouldn't be able to handle it. You read the book of Exodus 20 and you find out when he did talk to us, we almost died. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.